Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a realistic moon in Blender 4.0. So this one is actually really fun because anybody can make this. It doesn't matter if you're new to Blender, um, there's no modeling involved. We're going to set up a sphere here and we're going to be using some free textures from NASA's website. I'm going to show you how to set up some actual um, adaptive subdivision so we get the actual geometry displacing. It's just going to give us this fantastically uh, realistic looking effect and when you rotate the light around the moon it's just having those shadows with the actual physical displacement there just really adds something cool so if you want to learn how to do this keep watching give a subscription a like it all means a lot to me and let's jump in so to do this is really quite simple we're only going to need two basic textures so you can go to the internet and just type in cgi moon kit and you're going to see there is a nasa result and it's just svs cgi moon kit you're going to click on that I'll try and put a link to this in the description below, but anyway, it's very easy to find. And you're gonna see at the top, there's gonna to be a color map. So you're gonna come down to the download options. Now you can see there are a whole bunch of different ones here. And obviously the higher you go, the better it's gonna look, but obviously it's also gonna be a lot bigger. It's gonna be a lot more processing. So I think something like around a 4K range works really good. So for the color, I'm gonna go ahead and download the 4K one. So you're just gonna click on it and you can see here it's 12 and a half megabytes. And now it's downloading. Let's go to the next one. So if you scroll down, you're gonna see the displacement. So let's go here to download options. And in this case, I'm just gonna go with the TIFF here that's around the 5,760 pixel range. I'm gonna click on that. And now that one is downloading too. So when those two are done downloading, we'll jump into Blender 4.0. So we're inside of Blender and you can see here is my downloads folder. I have that color one here. So the one that's color and then the one that's just called ED IDEM 16. So um, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab the default cube and just delete it and then go shift A and go to your mesh options and add in a UV sphere. Now just real quick because this is really cool if you don't notice. If you do go to your UV editing you'll actually notice that there's no need to UV unwrap this because the sphere is already UV unwrapped in just the right way as we're gonna need it. So let's just go back to our layout there. I just wanted to let you guys know that. So that's what makes this really easy. So you're gonna go over to your render options first. Let's just change it to cycles since we are working in cycles. And if you do have a GPU, I recommend you use it, but you can always stick to CPU. And then under your render settings, I'd recommend something like 55 samples is more than enough. And another thing you're gonna to have to do because we're gonna be working with displacement is you're gonna to have to come here to the feature set and make it experimental. Um, this has been a way you have to do it in Blender for a long time. I'm not quite sure why it's not already kind of just part of the standard build, but you always have to come here and set it to experimental. So let's go also to our modifiers. Let's just go add modifier and let's search and type in sub and let's get a subdivision surface modifier. Now, because we have the experimental set uh, in the feature set here enabled, uh, if we go to our modifiers, we're gonna have an adaptive, adaptive subdivision option here as well, which is gonna be handy. So let's go over to our shading workspace and let's go to our camera view by pressing zero and you can grab your camera and just move it in closer. What I'd actually recommend is you add in a camera from the front view, so shift A, let's just add one in the front of a graphic, move it back like so. And let's go shift A and let's just add in a sunlight and have it coming from the side. And let's go R to rotate it in. And let's just go to our light strength and make it 12. And we need to go to our world properties and just make it completely black. So now if I go into our camera view and we go Z and we go rendered, we're gonna see this. But let's select this moon, right click and go shades move. And you can always rotate the camera any way you want. Um, for the visual effect. So I'm just gonna go with something like this. It's completely your personal choice how you want the light coming in. But with your moon selected, you're gonna go new. You're gonna type in here moon just to name it. And let's come here to the base color. Just click and drag on that little yellow node and let go. And then you're just gonna type in image. And you're gonna click on image texture. And let's click on open. And in this case, it's in my downloads. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the color and click on that and go open image and make sure it's actually the color going into the base color, not the alpha. So make sure it's the color feeding into the base color. And now you should be able to see the moon here. Pretty awesome. By the way, you can always double tap R if the moon selected and rotate it to get a position that you think looks cool. But let's get some of that cool displacements. Let's grab this color um, image texture here and go shift D to duplicate. Let's click on this little file here and let's go and get the second one, which is this one over here. 
That's also my downloads. I'm going to go ahead and open image. And then what we need to do, we need to take the color here and plug it into displacement. Then we need to go shift a search and get a displacement node and then put it on this cable. But we want to make sure that this color is actually going to the height. And let's drag it over here. So we have the color going into the height and the displacement output goes into the displacement of the material output. We also need to come here to the color space and we need to make it non-color. Now that's all correct, but um, this is looking terrible. So let's actually come here to the scale and make it 0 0.005 and hit enter. And at the moment it's looking pretty cool, but the problem here is we're not really actually getting um, real physical displacement. It's just all um, being rendered on the texture, but the, ge the geometry, the actual topology isn't um, subdividing. So let's come over here to our modifiers. Let's click on adaptive subdivision and then let's go to our material properties here and go down to the viewport display and let's go, or actually I think it's the settings. Go to your settings. Yes. And then under the surface, make the displacement, displacement and bump. And now we've got actual geometry being displaced. Another cool thing you can do is a little bit of a cheat is just take this color from the original color and plug it in to the normal over here. And then go shift a search and just get a bump node and place it over here and make sure it's going to the height. And then take the strength and make it 0 0.04. And then let's just also take this roughness here and just bump it up since the moon is very rough. It's okay, so something like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 should be fine. And now we have a moon. So let's just zoom in a little bit more maybe. Okay. And then let's make sure to save and let's go render and render the image. And here we have a really awesome looking moon. Um, I know that the displacement here is probably really over the top, but I kind of like that sort of exaggerated look. But by all means, you can come here to your displacement and bump it down to 0 0.0012 maybe, and then render it again. But I think this looks really good. So thank you for watching this tutorial on making a realistic moon in Blender. Definitely like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.